Hello, my friends. My name is Allison. I am the self-proclaimed priestess of Wonderland, and I have got a wonderful tarot reading here for you today for the Pisces new moon for March of 2024. We've got rainbows and we've got unicorns and the golden future. Oh my. Choose from these three piles, number one, two, or three, You'll find the timestamp in the description below that will take you directly to your reading. Each pile also has a significator here. Group number one has this double terminated chakra wand. Group number two has this beautiful rainbow kitty button. And group number three has a rainbow extractor needle. Pisces energy helps us connect to our spirituality. It helps us to connect to our emotions and heal our emotions. It helps us release blockages. It helps us go with the flow. It helps us be open to receiving. So go into these readings with an open mind. I also want to point out that this Pisces new moon is the last new moon before eclipse season. We will have a lunar eclipse at the full moon in a couple weeks. So this is the first regular old moon, and I think that it will help us cleanse and release any blockages. I think that it's going to help us prepare for eclipse season and any shifts that need to be created during eclipse season. So let's get ready to connect, to release, and to be open to receiving. I hope you have a wonderful, happy new moon. If you would like a more, a deeper, more personal reading, those are available on my website at priestessofwonderland.com. There's lots of different options for you on there, as well as Reiki and virtual healing sessions. Thanks for stopping by Wonderland today. I can't wait to see you here on the other side of the looking glass again soon. Hello, group one. If you chose the rainbow wand here, then this is your reading for the Pisces new moon of March of 2024. So we have the Prince of Wands, the Princess of Cups, and the Six of Pentacles. So the message, I was getting kind of a couple of different messages that are like very similar to each other. And that is either, you're either learning that your creativity and your spirituality are connected, or for some of you, you're learning how to connect them, or you are just wanting to live a more creative and spiritually connected life. And with the Six of Pentacles here, I think your intention should be setting a beast you should be setting them around being open to giving and receiving. Um, so my, I'm just going to read like what initially came through. Your new moon intention should be set around learning to give and receive equally. We are trained as children to not use our imagination once we are older. So we're used to blocking it and we're, we're used to blocking that side of your brain or our brains. So learning how to unblock it and use it again as adults is kind of challenging. A daily journaling or some sort of like tarot practice is going to be wonderful and easy to help you unblock this because like by setting a designated time and space to make a connection, you're training your brain to like at this time, I will be open to receiving. And it's just like helping you to unlock it kind of by being like, okay, I can be totally open and creative in this moment in time. And then I can go back to like my regular daily routine. So like when we create these small habits or rituals, our brain starts to learn that when I do these things, I am open to receiving. And I mean, all of us are blocked because we're we're taught that. We're taught that if you are imaginative and creative, that you're never going to be successful in life, that you're not going to make any money, that you're going to be a struggling artist for the rest of your life. And whether or not you relate to the artist kind of thing, like just 
living and being a co-creator with spirit is <laughs> creativity and artistic. Um, so whether you are like physically, like actually an, like by definition, an artist where like you paint or you sing or um, create some kind of art, or this could be like representing just co-creating with spirit, co-creating a life with spirit. So <laughs> of course, because we have the six of pentacles card here, we have the economy, trust that your needs will be met. And we also have music, bring yourself into divine harmony. So these are the cards from the new deck, my newest deck, or one of my newest decks, the, the Golden Future Oracle. So I'm going to read from these, from the book for these. And I <laughs> recommend having a very open mind because this deck is talking about this 5D future that we could all possibly be having uh, if we if we start to open up and to live creative, co-creative with spirit lives. So the music card here says, bring yourself into divine harmony. And the first section here is describing what that 5D future golden world looks like. So music will be popular and appreciated in, in the new golden age. When the importance of sound and harmony is fully understood and they are utilized to benefit people, groups will gather to perform or listen together. Music will bring much peace and enjoyment and be played for relaxation or to alter moods. The right vibrations will help children as well as adults learn to absorb information and will be sounded for healing and for manifestation. Everyone will have the opportunity to play a musical instrument. These will be freely available for anyone to use and will be treated with care. If someone is attuned to one in particular, this will be accepted and respected. So it will be theirs to use for as long as they need it. Because everyone will feel at peace and connected, all music will be harmonious, reflecting the congruence of both listeners and players. So this is that's just a description of what the golden future looks like. In the golden future, music and harmonics will be a source of enjoyment, healing, and togetherness. So the guidance of this card is to listen to some beautiful music and let it connect you to the silver light of Archangel Sandelfin, the Archangel of Music, who works with harmonics of creation. He is attuned to the music of the spheres, the perfect harmonies cre created by movements of the stars. Visualize yourself in Sandelfin's wondrous etheric retreat at the magical crystal cave at Lake Atlian in Guatemala. Look out and have a sense of the vastness of the universe with the stars all emitting their divine note. Ask Arch Archangel Sandelfin to align you with your fifth dimensional blueprint so that you vibrate with the energy of the stars and the new golden age. The more you center yourself and relax, the more you can raise your frequency and bring you into divine harmony with the cosmos. So I was receiving an, an additional message in regards to this card and whatever you decide to be your like daily practice and daily routine of connecting, it might be beneficial to like have music being played and maybe specifically like the same music or just music that's chosen intentionally to connect. That way, that's another trigger for your brain. When I listen to this music, whether it's like uh, Sofagilio frequencies, singing bowls, or something that's like meant to be healing vibrationally, that way, whenever you hear that type of music, your brain starts to understand to start to connect, to get into that like divine space. Okay, so it doesn't surprise me that this economy card came up with the Six of Pentacles uh, because in so far, this is the card that has come up the most frequently <laughs> in this deck. I think it came out three times when we unboxed it. <laughs> now I hear it is again. So trust your needs will be met. As international trade ceases, Countries that rely on exports will make massive adjustments to become self-sufficient and to care for their citizens. When the old financial paradigm collapses, various currencies will take its place for a while until money ceases to be relevant. The people will share and exchange the goods that they want or need. As consciousness rises, individuals worldwide will understand that there is enough for everyone, so ownership will no longer be necessary. 
Wise community decisions, open-hearted sharing, and generous giving will replace the old economic ideas. Everyone will pool their assets and their food, taking only what they need. They build homes collectively, freely contributing their skills. When the masses live at a fifth dimensional frequency without ego, whatever is needed will automatically be made available. In the golden future, people will trust the universe to provide for all their needs. So will freely share what they have. So the guidance of this card calls on you to open your heart and meditate on the flow of abundance and prosperity in your life. Fifth dimensional thoughts and beliefs automatically and easily draw anything that you need from the universe. So cultivate them. Your personal economic situation depends solely on your consciousness. The more people open, wait, the more people open their hearts and minds to the divine and accept their due as beloved children of the universe, the more quickly the entire planet will move into the golden future. Hold the faith for everyone. The Buddha known as the embodiment of wisdom is helping to clear old at attitudes to finance so as to create an equitable and compassionate world. Surround yourself in citrine light, then consciously focus on abundance. Pray, practice open-hearted receiving as well as giving, and at the same time, take economic decisions in a grounded, sensible, and practical way. So we all have to learn these lessons of being open to giving and receiving and to be trusting that the universe is is looking out for us that when we believe that something can happen and this is this is what pisces pisces can help us to dream bigger and to believe that we are worthy of more uh, that more is available to us if we are open to it so if we're constantly telling ourselves i can't do this because of i can't take time off work or I don't have enough time to do this, or I don't have enough money to do this. We constantly keep ourselves stuck in this negative cycle. So if we start to be open to the infinite possibilities of, yes, I can do this thing, or if I set the intention and desire to do this thing, that the money will come, the time will come and be made available to us. Your unicorn is the pool of Christ's light. Open your heart and spread unconditional love. I know when we talk about Christ or Christianity, especially in a magical community, it's not often received very well. And I think for some people who are Christian, think that it's like sacrilegious to be talking about the, the lessons of Christianity without actually following that religion or believing in other deities and other gods. And on the other hand, I think that people within the magical community have difficulty when ideals of religion come up in a space that is supposed to be more open spiritually. The bottom line here is that all of the gods are the same, one in the same, just like all of us are one in the same. And we are all <laughs> divine and connected to God as well. Your God and my God are the same, even though they look different. And I, I truly believe that whatever resonates with you or whatever form God takes for you is because that was something that you created with spirit because it because it resonates with you, because that makes sense to you. Um, I think for a lot of people who are female, respond more to the goddess archetype just because you relate to that feminine energy. And the same thing for masculine energy. And just, I think the form that God takes for you is also just like what you needed. For those of you that chose this reading, we have two pages here. They're called prince and princess in this deck, but they're pages and the pages are students. The pages are learning and Jesus was a teacher and Jesus often appears to teachers and or students. So again, open your heart and don't be turned off by this reading if you don't resonate with Christ energy and don't be turned off by this <laughs> reading if you um, just, just be, have an open heart is what I'm saying. So 
Your guidance is to breathe in Christ light and practice seeing, hearing, and communicating with love. Your unicorn is asking you to radiate the divine energy to other people, places, and situations too, for this will make a significant difference to them. It will also accelerate your ascension (laughs) and bring you closer to your unicorn. I radiate with Christ light. So basically, this is a diamond white frequency that we often associate with source. A lot of guided meditations that you'll listen to will ask you to envision a white or gold light scanning your body and relieving you of any tension. And that's all this card is saying. I do feel the teacher-student connection for those of you that chose this group. And it might also be a sign that you might want to find a teacher that will help you connect your creativity to your uh, spirituality. And we also have here, thank you, gratitude, appreciating what's sustaining you. So I'm not going to read from this deck because we've already, already taken a lot of time and read a lot. Um, So the message from this card with gratitude is along the lines of this economy card and the six of pentacles card. When we are, and I've kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but not in the gratitude sense. When we are grateful for the things that we have, we start to get and build that momentum of believing that we are worthy of of good things. And it also allows us to call in more good things. When we have a gratitude practice, we're telling the universe that, hey, I appreciate these things that I have and I am open to receiving more. If we only focus on the things that we don't have, then we're going to stay in that lack mindset or poverty consciousness and get stuck there. So you're just going to continue to be lacking. So a regular gratitude practice might be good to set up if you are going to create a try to break down those blockages and being open to your spirit connection and learning how to connect your creativity with your spirituality, how to live a co-creative life, maybe having that thank you for helping me to connect, thank you for helping me to receive, and adding some sort of gratitude practice to your daily routine will be beneficial for those of you that chose this group. I was feeling called to share with this group um, Amy Sasari's work. She is the creator of the Coloring Book of Shadows. Um, This is a planner, but the, the original book, The Coloring Book of Shadows, is just like uh, it, it just just like what it says. It's a coloring book of shadows. And um, this is the tarot journal. So this is just an example because um, my coloring book of shadows is like I, there's pages ripped out and it's kind of a mess. But just to show you um, what's going on here, like this coloring book of shadows book helped me to connect my creativity, exactly what we're talking here, connect my creativity to my spirituality. And I found that I, I, I like this, these books, her books are just, were really, uh, they, they really helped me have this spiritual breakthrough, I guess. And how I would use the book, Coloring Book of Shadows, I'm a very slow artist. It takes me a really long time to create things. So I had to learn to not put so much pressure on myself to um like I actually could not finish the planner because um having to color every week although I like really wanted to it, it was too stressful for me so I just still use the coloring pages like if I ever have something that I'm like oh I wish daisy like I want to put daisies on this I'll color this in and cut it out and kind of like collage create like that Um, Because I just felt even every month, like doing a big page like this was, was really stressful for me. So how I use the coloring book of shadows, what is like, I like on a Sabbath, I would like, let's say the the spring equinox is coming up. I would tear out the spring equinox page, start to color it, but I wouldn't put pressure on myself to finish it. And then when the next spring equinox came around, I would pull that page out again and continue working on it. And it helped me not only have some sort of dedicated thing that I did every Sabbath. I mean, it helped me to celebrate every Sabbath throughout the year. 
which was something that I wanted to do, but wasn't doing. I always intended to, but then I never made time to figure out what I wanted to do for a ritual. And then when the day actually came around, since I didn't have a plan, I just wouldn't do anything or I life got busy. I didn't have time. And this was something easy to do that I could do every Sabbath. And it really helped me continually dedicate to a spiritual practice and to celebrating all of the Sabbaths and celebrating all the holidays. So it really unblocked a lot for me. So I felt called to share that with you. Um, she has PDF versions that you can, so that you can print out and um, lots of different, I mean, she has so many now. I mean, she has the tarot one. She has the, she has the planners. She has a, a crystal one, an herbal one. She has the book of shadows, which covers like, um, she has a bunch of different books of shadows. There's different ones, um, but they have your basic information for the Sabbaths and for um, the planets and astrology and like basically anything you could ever need she has available. Um, and she even has already colored in ones now, like the whole <laughs> intent is so that you're coloring them, but she does have them in full color now. So anyways, let's keep moving forward. We've got two chakra cards for you. And it did not surprise me that this card comes up because it is the most pulled card from the chakra deck. And it goes with the six of pentacles energy. It goes with this economy card energy. So it, it did not surprise me that this card came out. So we have money is energy and we hold a precious choice, whether to prevent or encourage its flow. Are your channels for giving and receiving open wide enough? Do you allow the vibration of prosperity to radiate both from you and towards you? Reflect on your resources and how you can use them to create more abundance for both yourself and those around you. Remember also to give back with an open heart for all that is coming your way. Give thanks before you receive. This is a solar plexus chakra card. The crystal is yellow fluorite and the herb is basil. So this does tell me that like maybe some of your blockages might be in the solar plexus and that self-esteem, confidence to create or that self-esteem and confidence that you're worthy enough of receiving and we also have a sacral chakra card here, which does not surprise me because we're talking about creativity and co-creating with spirit. So fearless creativity. When you light and stoke your inner fire, you awakened, you awaken inspired, youthful energy, take action in your life, spark the embers of your creativity, sexuality, life force, and will, and allow them to emanate from your very being. Try doing something that scares you. Your fears can be a good teacher and introduce you to some of your heart's deepest desires, which often hide behind our fears. Give yourself permission to embrace all of who you are, fears and passions included. The crystal they recommend is sunstone and the herb is vanilla. For those of you that chose group number one in this beautiful wand, I chose it for you because wand, double terminated wands, are meant for giving and receiving. Um, there usually is, this one's hard to tell. This is a wider end and this is a narrower end. So usually the narrow end is for giving, projecting energy, and usually the wider end is meant for receiving energy. And this one has um, all of the chakras, earth, um, not all of the chakras, <laughs> nine of the chakras. This is the earth star, the root, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, crown, and soul star. Um, so this is a wand that will help you get into alignment and it will also send and receive energy for you. So that might be something to add to your practice of connecting using a wand uh, to open up that channel of giving and receiving even more. So group one, let's set intentions about making some sort of daily practice ritual for your creativity and or connecting to your spirituality. And the suggestions I had here was maybe the coloring book of shadows or 
having a journal practice, having a card practice, sitting down and coloring, sitting down and creating, playing music while you do these things. Um, all of these repetitive things will help your brain remember, I'm open to receiving when I do these things. Also have some sort of gratitude practice when you do that as well. So let this Pisces energy inspire your creativity and your spirituality. Let the waters cleanse you, but also be a conductor for connecting you as well. Hello, group two. If you chose this uh, rainbow cat pin here, then this is your reading for the new moon in Pisces for March of 2024. So we have for you the six of pentacles, the empress who is coming to us in reverse, and the nine of pentacles. So the immediate message that I was getting for uh, those of you that chose this group is that you aren't taking care of yourself. And I think there's like lots of different reasons for this. This is a collective reading. So there's a lot of you watching. And I think for some of you, this might be because you're so busy taking care of everybody else, you're not taking care of yourself. Um, so, so maybe it's because you're taking care of everyone else. But at least for some of you, it's because you're also just not accepting help either. I think some of you are maybe being offered help and refusing it. So this might be a lesson in accepting help and receiving help for some of you. Um, I was also getting the sense that your guard is up. Um, I just kept looking at this cat here or this, it's a black tiger. I don't think I've ever seen before. I, I feel like some of you are guarded for some reason or another. Um, and I was also finding that there's like some sort of connection with this black cat here and this black cat here. We have sexuality, express pure love, and we have psychic gifts. Learn to trust your intuition. So this is a brand new deck to me. I'm going to read the messages for, for each of these cards. And so this is the, the golden future oracle deck. And this deck is built around what to expect in the future when we have ascended and are living in a 5D compassionate society. So the first part that I'm going to read here is describing what sexuality looks like in the future, what psychic gifts looks like in the future, and then there's some guidance that goes along with each card too. So the sacral chakra of love and navel chakra of oneness are two separate centers encapsulated within one large one. When we are balanced and energy flows perfectly between them, people understand and experience higher love. They also develop pure clear sentience. When people live at a fifth dimensional frequency, their sacral chakras become the softest and most delicate pink. At this level, sexuality is expressed tenderly with love, honor, and respect. Intercourse becomes a transcendent exchange of pure love. When their masculine and feminine energies come perfectly into balance, many souls will embody androgyny. Complete in themselves, they will move beyond sexuality as we know it today. In the golden future, couples will experience transcendent love through sexuality. Sex will be considered sacred, special, and beautiful. So the guidance of this card says, receiving this card suggests it is time to develop the higher chambers of your sacral chakra. The lessons here include caring for others, giving love, and sharing love. The final lesson is about nurturing and supporting a baby or any vulnerable creature with tenderness. Ooh, because another one of the images that stood out for me was this of the woman with the bird here, how she's uh, cusping it in her hands and looks like she's probably like stroking it or something like that. So I was really drawn to that image as well. The final lesson is about nurturing and supporting a baby or any vulnerable creature with tenderness. When you do so, your sacral chakra glows with transcendent beauty. It reminds you that pure love of any kind is special. You are asked to express sexuality in its greatest and purest form by reaching out to others or doing something for them with love, tenderness, and caring. Cherish people and tune in to their needs. Aphrodite, who is 
associated with love, beauty, and fertility, was a high priestess in the Temple of Love in the Golden Era of Atlantis. The first thing she impressed upon her people when they built the temple, which was connected directly to the planet Venus, was to give thanks. So be grateful for all the love in your life and ask the high priestess Aphrodite to help you develop your tran- transcendent sacral chakra. So um, some of the messages that I were getting for some of you is that I think for some of you, you've lost someone recently, whether that was a human thing or a cat. I keep looking at this cat. I don't know if it's cat or uh, some sort of animal companion or even a spirit guide or the loss of a friendship or maybe the loss of a career. Um, there's some sort of separation, whether that's in this life, like a separation in this life or a separation from this life, meaning someone has passed on. I think for some of you, this could be a human or a companion loss. So, cause this makes me think of the rainbow bridge and if it's, if it's like the loss of a romantic relationship, I think this sexuality card comes into play because your sacral chakra might be blocked a little bit. And, um, I'm, this is the first I'm hearing of like your sacral chakra being, having like an upper and a lower and two separate things. So, um, this is, this is all new to me, but it would make sense that if you needed to focus on two separate energies, I don't know, one could be developing self-love and, or focusing on creativity. Like what I'm saying is if you're not ready to like express yourself sexually with somebody else, that there are ways to do that, um, with self-love or, uh, opening up to your creativity as well. And there might be some sort of creativity, spiritual connection that's, that needs to be happening with you. Maybe that might help open your sacral chakra and also open your psychic gifts, which we'll read that card in a moment. This six of pentacles card also came up in the first group. So if you were drawn to that too, there was a lot of talk about creativity in the first group as well. Creativity and spirituality. Uh, the psychic gifts learn to trust your intuition when the frequencies of people's throat chakras become fully fifth dimensional, they become telepathic. This engenders direct, honest, and clear communication, which in turn creates trust, peace, and a sense of safety. Clairvoyance and remote viewing are possible when certain chambers of the third eye chakra are activated. In the golden future, everyone will see auras and energy fields, so everything will be revealed. We will know exactly who everyone and their gifts and who they are and, and their gifts and talents, as well as how they feel. Everyone will be able to send and receive video messages directly from the third, third eye to third eye and in tune with what is happening far away. Many will be able to see the future. As the veils between the worlds thin, people will clairvoyantly through the dimensions into the spiritual and angelic realms and communicate with the beings of light who guide and help us. In the golden future, people's calm, clear minds will be will enable their psychic gifts to develop. It's interesting that it's mentioning like being calm, like calm, clear minds. I'm having like a little bit of trouble breathing when doing this reading. It's like I'm I'm out of breath. Like I feel like I've ran up a hill or something. And so I'm trying to like slow down and focus on my breath and make sure that I'm taking like really deep belly breaths. I don't know if that might be helpful for some of you because I mean, I'm just sitting here and I'm, I'm feeling like winded and that could be an anxiety reaction uh, for some of you. There's something going on with breathing, holding your breath. Um, I do feel like there is some sort of obstacle, a challenging time that you've had to overcome recently. So maybe you've been avoiding making connections and maybe avoiding spiritual connections. Cause like when we go through difficult times, we tend to, some of us tend to like dive into your work and stay busy and just fill your day up with so much stuff so that you never have this downtime to think about how you're feeling. And so like use, use uh, physical activity uh, work, um, other people's problems 
as a way to distract yourself from whatever it is that is going on in your life. So choosing this card indicates that it is time to ask Archangel Muriel, the beautiful pink and white angel of love, compassion, and harmony to help develop your psychic chakras and to have confidence in the guidance you receive. She enables you to see with new eyes and to trust your sixth sense. To, so center yourself and clear your mind. The more deeply you relax and soothe your thoughts and emotions, the easier it will be to bring forward your psychic and spiritual gifts. Be very aware of your gut feelings and act on them. Absorb, uh, observe your psychic impressions about people and learn to trust what you receive. Practice looking through and slightly beyond people and trees to sense what their auras reveal. So that's when you like look at look at something and then you kind of let your eyes lose focus and that you're kind of seeing around around the person instead of or around the person or tree as this is suggesting uh to see if you can see um somebody's aura it's really great to do this like against a a white wall or surface it kind of helps you helps your eyes soften and lose focus so that you're able to see that around the edges validate your flashes of intuition and they will become stronger and more frequent so i was also getting the message with this card that whatever obstacle or lesson that you have been going through right now is an acceleration in ascension so this feels like your intuition your chakras and psychic gifts are are being like busted wide open and I mean, a lot of the lessons that we have in our life, and I'm, I'm even, if this is a, a physical loss of, of someone passing, I'm sorry for your loss. And you're probably not ready <laughs> to hear this, but if, if this was a new thing, but like when we, when we lose someone, we start to think about the beyond. Like we start to think what's on the other side, where did they go? So it's only natural for your spirituality and your connection to spirit to uh to be busted open wide is like what i <laughs> what i keep hearing um but because because your awareness is there your awareness is what else is out there where did they go and so you're you're more open to uh discovering what is on the other side is there something on the other side and defining and figuring out what your belief system is in regards to the afterlife so like it's just only natural for that to happen because your awareness is there um but yeah i just kept thinking like like busted what like your chakras are very open um higher chakras and and you're you're accelerating your ascension um pretty rapidly it feels like so we also have the pearl alchemy the reward at the end and from grit to grace and um mahatma energy build your light body accelerate your ascension i didn't notice that before so i wanted to read from the water deck also pearls are one of the most precious treasures of this world and certainly of the sea while the specifics of creation remain a mystery they've be they're believed to be the role result of a natural process Certain mollusks produce pearls as a way of protecting themselves from irritants that enter their shells. The formation of a natural pearl is a rare occurrence, with only one in roughly 10,000 oysters producing one, and it can take anywhere from six months to several years. This card brings a precious message that something sacred is being created, and it's likely being created by you. Maybe you've been creating something in the physical, such as a child, a home, or bringing an idea to life, or perhaps your pearl is more metaphorical than that. Having dedicated yourself to alchemizing your hardships into healing grit into grace, whatever it is, you're being acknowledged for your work and the deep roots required to truly rise. I'm ready to receive the jewels of my life. I'm ready to alchemize, alchemize my hardships and healing and my grit into grace. So I think this is like more reassurance that this obstacle that you're facing and perhaps this loss is going to create some sort of nugget jewel of 
of truth for you, of wisdom, of knowledge, of psychic awareness, of creativity or sexuality. Like your this lesson is going to bear lots of fruits of your labor. In the golden era of Atlantis, many great beings contributed towards a specific or a special pool of light. It in, it formed a high frequency golden white light group consciousness known as Mahatma energy. Unicorns added their light to it, as did the Buddha, the Christ, and the 12 rays, and many others. The Mahatma energy accelerates your ascension a thousandfold. When you choose this card, your unicorn is inviting you to call on Mahatma energy through your 12 chakras to activate them to your highest potential. Ask it to flow through your energy systems to break up and clear old patterns that no longer serve your growth and to keep your glands that govern your health and spiritual well-being strong and active. Also send it to others to help their health and their ascension. When Mahatma energy flows through you, it forms a pool of high frequency light in the earth below your feet. Your unicorn is asking you to offer it to Lady Gaia to help the planet to ascension. Your guidance is to invoke your unicorn and ask it to hold you in the highest light possible then invoke Mahatma energy to build your crystalline, crystalline light body and prepare yourself for the new golden age. So I think that's just more confirmation that whatever it is that you're going through right now is spiritual ascension, whether that feels like it's related to spirituality, if it's something that's very physical and tangible, then difficult to go through it. When you get to the end of it, this is giving you some sort of pearl of wisdom a very significant one. Your chakra cards are no worries, a root chakra and a third eye chakra. I think I, I don't remember exactly what the line was now, but I feel like this one uh, did touch a little bit on and thinking back to the sacral chakra too. Like uh, we always think of psychic, the psychic chakras being the upper chakras, um, the third eye, the crown and the soul star and higher uh, that like really connects us to our spirituality, but we also need to focus on those lower root and sacral chakras and even the, the solar plexus chakra as well to make sure that we're grounded and stable and rooted and able to receive the messages from the higher chakras. So the root chakra is no worries. Remember that protection is your divine birthright. Ground your energy into Gaia with a vibrant garnet red grounding cord that you send from between your hips down into the depths of her sacred wound. Send all of your fears, worries, and concerns down that cord and feed them back into the earth where they can be transformed and transmuted, returning to you as usable white light. The crystal they recommend is red jasper. The herb is rosemary. And again, this is a root chakra. Now the light codes, all beings come into each lifetime with light codes they carry and transmit over the course of their lives. These multidimensional pieces of information and wisdom are shared without consciousness communication. You are activating new light codes of healing right now, and you can use them to help yourself and others as you feel called. To understand more about these codes, go into meditation and consult your guides. Ask for clear signs, symbols, and guidance. So this is the third eye chakra. The crystal they recommend is soda light and the herb is mandrake root. So for those of you that chose group two, I would encourage you to set intentions around your own personal self-care, uh, giving yourself time and space to heal, to uh, get quiet and allow yourself to receive messages from spirit, to receive guidance, to do healing, to reconnect, and restructure the foundation of your life so that you are grounded and stable enough to receive these light codes. Um, maybe this is going to be a meditation practice for you, something that allows you to get ground, grounded and centered daily, and also just calming your mind, slowing your breath, slowing your heart rate, and just allowing yourself to be quiet for at least a few minutes uh, a day. Um, you can start out with a small meditation. Like sometimes if I know I have a busy day, 
I just set a timer on my watch for three minutes, just, and I just sit there and breathe. If that's the only thing that I feel like I have time for. And a lot of times after that three minutes, I'm like, oh, that was too short. Let me, let me set a timer for five minutes. And then if that was too short, I'm like, okay, 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 let's just do 20 minutes. <laughs> so any, you can start anywhere. You can start with a minute. I think that's all I have to say for you, group two. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Be gentle and careful with yourself. Allow for help and assistance when you need it. And we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Hello, group three. If you chose this beautiful extractor diamond, then, or extractor needle, excuse me, then this is your reading for March, March of 24 for the Pisces new moon. So we've got lots of reverse energy for this group. First is the King of Wands in reverse and the Five of Wands in reverse and the Three of Pentacles in reverse. So the good news here is that the Five of Wands in, in reverse is a, is a pos positive sign. The Five of Wands upright is a card of conflict and very petty, meaningless conflict. Um, however, this is not meaningless conflict for you. Um, this is like a significant lesson or obstacle that you've been going through recently. Um, but when the Five of Wands is, is in reverse, this is a card of compromise and resolution. <laughs> I'm just going to read the initial messages that I received for you all. Oh, my beautiful threes, it is time to let go, put down your weapon, and cease fire now. Compromise is the only way. Everyone in this situation needs to come to a resolution that is fair for all parties involved. I can feel this conflict. I can feel this tension. And I can feel you asking, like, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? And I want to change that phrase to this is happening for me, not to me, because I feel like the conflict that you or obstacle that you are facing right now is a soul contract conflict. You made this plan before you came in this life um, for everybody, for everybody involved in this situation. This is a, a soul contract lesson. Um, so this is happening for you. This is the conflict you are in is healing and teaching all parties significant lessons. This is a, these are soul contract lessons. This is happening for you, not to you. I know that doesn't make it any easier, but <laughs> let's, let's take a deep breath and kind of try and be open to, um, what other messages that we have Enter galactic travel is the first one regard the stars with wonder and the good old economy card this is the fifth time at least the fifth time maybe sixth time that this card has come out since i've gotten this deck and i've o i've only had this deck for less than 24 hours and have only done this is the only reading or these are the only readings plus the original cards that we pulled when we unboxed it on stream. So this card has come up six times out of probably eight to 10 readings, maybe. <laughs> so six out of 10, that's a lot. So that shows you how significant or how all of us are, are having to learn this economy lesson as well. So, um, but let's start with the intergalactic travel since that's the first card there. So these cards are from the Golden Future Oracle, and it's written from the perspective of like, this is what to expect in the future. And so come uh, receive these messages with like an open mind, because um, I think a lot of the concepts are kind of difficult for us who are here in 3D to understand and grasp the messages of 5D. So um, just come in with like a, a learning mindset. Um, the first part of this message is going to be, um, it kind of just describes like what to expect in the 5D golden era future. And then there's also guidance 
in this card. So for thousands of years, people have looked in awe at the stars. And more recently, attempts have been made to explore space. To do so successfully, we must have love, true humility, and the right intention. By 2050, though, we will have the oneness consciousness that allows us to visit other parts of the universe so that we can connect and cooperate with our cosmic friends. Scientists will work in harmony with the angelic realms, the masters and the beings in charge of the stars and planets. By then, advanced technology will have created new eco-materials to build rockets and the means to power them. These rockets will carry people around the world at unbelievable speeds and will also fly to the stars and planets. In the new golden age, we will be ready and able to visit our companions in this universe in spacecraft and communicate with them. So the guidance of this card says, Commander Ashtar, who originates from Venus, commands the intergalactic fleet that protects our world. He helps all the universes in balance and harmony with one another. When you receive this card, you automatically receive an invitation to connect with the commander Ashtar and travel with him in your light body. He He is sending a sparkling silver light into your crown chakra, and this touches your consciousness to give you an expanded understanding of the universe. It also triggers a ray to touch your throat chakra with truth and your heart chakra with unconditional love. Take a moment to experience this. If you wish to do so, mentally accept Commander Ashtar's invitation and know that you will accompany him in his mothership to help the multiverse while you sleep. Imagine yourself looking out from the stars for a fraction of a second. Every star and planet is sending you a pulse of welcoming energy. Accept it with joy. Okay, so this is really interesting, and I'll probably mention this um, in the introduction as well. I start to get short of breath from reading reading the guidebook for this for this deck, and I'm wondering if it's like a struggle to get to a high, like a struggle to breathe because I'm like when we're opening ourselves up to higher frequencies and a better understanding for the fifth dimension, it's like you forget to do the 3D things or something, which a 3D thing is breathing because I'm in a physical, tangible, 3D, three-dimensional body. Because this is the second time. I didn't notice if it was happening in the first group, but in the second group, and I attributed it to anxiety. Um that I was maybe picking up from the reading. And maybe I am. I mean, we're talking about conflict and resolution here. So maybe if there is some anxiety with you, um, we can all maybe take a deep breath together and remember to breathe. So the messages for this card in regards to this reading, um, I know it's kind of a big idea of intergalactic travel, Um, But I think the message here is confirming what I was feeling about this being a soul contract lesson or obstacle or conflict. And that helps us approach like what we're going through from a different perspective, from maybe a fifth dimensional perspective, from an understanding that there is more to this three dimensional world. And remembering like when we get stuck in this, the drama that is life. Uh, we oftentimes forget that like we are light beings. We came here for a reason and um, that might help loosen some of the tension that's going on with this conflict and make you a little bit more open, feel op- more open to forgiveness. I, what was really jumping out for me about the messages here is this touches your consciousness to give you an expanded understanding of the universe. It also triggers to touch your throat chakra with truth and your heart chakra with unconditional love. So encouraging you to speak your truth, especially in regards to this conflict and to lead with an open heart and to understand that everyone involved is a human with a heart and 
we can maybe approach conflict and situations that we might feel heated or angry with a little bit more love and compassion. And then 21, I'm going to have this, I'm going to have this economy card um, memorized by the time I am through with this deck. So trust your needs will be met. As an international, as international trade ceases, countries that rely on exports will make massive adjustments to become self-sufficient and to care for their citizens. When the old financial paradigm collapses, various currencies will take its place for a while until money ceases to be relevant. Amen. I'm ready for money to not be a thing. Then people will share and exchange the goods they want or need. As consciousness rises, individuals worldwide will understand that there is enough for everyone. So ownership will no longer be necessary. Wise community decisions, open-hearted sharing, and generous giving will replace the old economic ideas. Everyone will pool their assets and their food, taking only what they need. They will build homes collectively, freely contributing their skills. When the masses live at a fifth dimensional frequency without ego, whatever is needed will automatically be made available. In the golden future, people will trust the universe to provide all their needs, so will freely share what they have. And, um, well, I'll just read the guidance. Sorry, I was going to jump into why, why I feel like this relates to this reading, but this card calls on you to open your heart and meditate on the flow of abundance and prosperity in your life. Fifth dimensional thoughts and beliefs automatically and easily draw anything that you need from the universe. So cultivate them. Your personal economic situation depends solely on your consciousness. The more people open, the more people open their hearts and minds to the divine and accept their due as beloved children of the universe the more quickly the entire planet will move into the golden future. I do kind of feel like that's going to be one of the hardest things to let go of because so much of the big business control in the world doesn't want to let go of that. So all, all of us poor people are like, I'm ready to let go of this economic system. I'm ready to let go of capitalism. But <laughs> there's more bigger people in control than than us little people. Um we're ready. They're not. <laughs> uh, Lord Gautama, the Buddha, known as the embodiment of wisdom, is helping to clear old attitudes to, fi to finance so as to create an equitable and compassionate world. Surround yourself in citrine light, then consciously focus on abundance. Practice open-hearted receiving as well as giving, and the same time, at the same time, take economic or at the same time, take economic decisions in a grounded, sensible, and practical way. I was partially kind of feeling like maybe this conflict might be over money, especially with the three of pentacles here. So having a more like, I guess, I, I mean, I think I already kind of said this of having a more open hearted, more heart centered, compassionate and honest throat chakra when it comes to conflict re resolution, it's going to help you find a resolution for that supports everybody that supports the highest good of everybody involved. All right, so then we our unicorn friend is creative solutions. <laughs> Think outside the box, view things from a higher perspective. This is one of my favorite unicorn cards because it has the squirrely squirrely friend on it. And the Isle of Avalon healing, returning to wholeness and transformation. I do feel that this obstacle or conflict is going to bring you divine healing. Like, like you were meant to overcome this obstacle and you were meant to have this lesson. And um, let me take a peek at the guidebook and see if anything jumps out at me really quick. Um, I do want to read the unicorn one though. Some believe that this Isle of Avalon, which is also known as the Isle of Apples, in the Isle of the Dead is a myth mythical place of healing that exists beyond the veil. Others say that it ex exists in the physical. Avalon and its healing spring waters have identified, have been identified in Glastonbury and Somerset, Southwest England. And even today, pilgrims travel to the town. It is believed that this sacred place of healing was once surrounded by water and could only be reached by boat. 
This is a card of great healing and an invitation to see that your healing is an opportunity for great transformation, that perhaps the parts of you that feel as if they're dying are actually being born anew. Maybe this healing journey is taking you somewhere truly glor glorious, somewhere sacred deep within. I feel like this obstacle and this conflict is taking you to a better place. And I, I'm, I'm feeling like a lot of forgiveness energy around this, needing to forgive yourself, heal whatever part of you is hurting and aching. Um, and that's one of the reasons I chose the extractor needle for you, because how this works is say I say I'm having, I'm, I'm in a conflict and, and like, I'm in a situation that's causing me pain, whether that's emotional or, or physical pain. And you want to get quiet and think, uh, go within and breathe. And when you think about this conflict, where do you feel it in your body? So let's pretend just for video's sake that I'm feeling, I'm feeling this conflict as pain in my thumb here. So the extractor needle is meant to use this round end as a massage tool and you and then it is extracting that energy, whatever energy is stuck there and trapped there. It's extracting it, going through all of the, all of these different chakra stones here to cleanse and transmute it and release it. So wherever the point is, is the releasing end and the wider end is the gathering end, the receiving end. And so um, the, that's why I chose the extractor needle for you, because there is a need for release for you. There's a need for forgiveness and there's a need for letting go. Um, I think there were two last messages here. I surrender to my healing. I activate the sacred intelligence within the waters of my body. I call in all the support that's most helpful. And I believe in my ability to transform and to heal. So the two of these cards, um, really had me feeling called to tell you about this. It's a blue, blue room meditation for healing conflicts. And uh, the reason that this came up because Avalon is thought to be like a mythical place or a place that's not quite in this dimension. And this is talking about intergalactic travel or for the sake of the story I'm telling here is an interdimensional travel. And so the blue room meditation is designed to find the highest, best solution for everybody involved with whatever conflict you're going through. So you like do whatever you need to do to get into a meditative space, focus on your breath, get grounded, centered, whatever, and then start to visualize that you are in, you're going to enter a room and the door to that room is blue the doorknob is blue. Everything about the door frame is blue. The walls, maybe the floor you're standing on is blue. And we're going to enter this blue room. So you open the blue door, you go into the blue room, the floor is blue, the walls are blue, the ceiling is blue. And there's this long conference table in the center of the room. And <laughs> the table is blue. The chairs around the table is blue. And the reasoning for the blue is blue is the color of peace. So you sit down at the table and you call your spirit guides there, or you can call any, like, if you want to uh, call on a deity that helps with conflict resolution, um, off the top of my head, I can't think of like <laughs> who that would be now, but call on your spirit guides and your spirit team. And you ask them to come and sit at the table with you. And then you ask, whoever you're in conflict with to come sit at the table with you. You ask them to come sit along with their guides and their people, their spirit team, everybody involved in this situation. And then what you're going to do is you and the people in the situation get up from the table, leave the room, and now it's everybody's spirit team sitting around this table in the blue room. And you ask them, Please come up with a resolution for everybody's highest good. You leave the room. They leave the room. Your spirit team takes care of the situation. You are handing it over to spirit. You're handing it over to the universe that no matter what happens, I trust that spirit is going to resolve this 
for my highest good. And then it's out of your hands. You don't have to worry about it anymore. So that's just a little meditation that I learned, uh, I guess like, I think I learned it around 2020. And it's been so helpful because I know when you're in a conflict, you're just, I use it all the time. And it's because you're just like, you think about it over and over. You're just running in your head. You're feeling anxious. You're worrying over everything, but then you can just let go and give it to spirit and spirit can take care of it for you. It usually works out. I don't, I mean, there's never been a time that it hasn't worked out. Um, something will arise. Some sort of resolution will will arise within your life and it's just, everything's going to be taken care of. So creative solutions, think outside the box, views things from a higher perspective. Your life lessons are presented to you as a series of challenges. It is how you deal with your circumstances that allows you to progress along your path and pass the tests. <laughs> I didn't even read this before. Um, <laughs> so this is like totally perfect. Even when a difficulty seems insurmountable, your unicorn will remind you that there is a solution to every problem. So look at every aspect of the situation from a higher perspective. See with spiritual eyes, listen with compassionate ears, and send love to every person involved, however troublesome they may appear to be. Whatever the trial or setback, love is the universal solvent that transmutes everything. It allows magical solutions to emerge that your conscious mind could not imagine. Receiving this card suggests that you are either going through a test right now or you will be shortly. It is a rite of passage on your path that will open a door to something better. You have the courage, tenacity, and spiritual strength to handle any challenge, but this may be a time for meditation negotiation, or a complete rethink. Examine everything with wisdom and act with diplomacy that the outcome will be better when you anticipate. When you raise your frequency above that of a difficulty, it can no longer have an impact on you. Use your creative mind to think outside the box and ask your unicorn for help and stay open to its responses. I feel like maybe this was the card that made me think of... Um, the blue room meditation, just leaving it up to spirit. So you don't have to worry about it anymore. So we have two chakra cards today, and both of them are third eye. We have soul path intuition and light codes. So yours, your path is unfolding in good and perfect time. You are right where you are meant to be. No one is in your life by accident and nothing has transpired without careful consideration and curation by spirit. Now is the time for you to trust this path and open yourself to deeper awareness of your purpose for incarnating in this lifetime. As you engage your dharma and explore your purpose, you may be inspired or called upon to help others do the same. So the crystal they recommend for this one is tanzanite and the herb is poppy. And light code says all beings come into each lifetime with light codes they carry and transmit over the course of their lives. These multidimensional pieces of information and wisdom are shared without conscious communication. You are activating new light codes of healing right now, and you can use them to help you, yourself, and others as you feel called. To understand more about these codes, go into meditation and consult your guides. Ask for clear signs, symbols, and guidance. So this one, they recommend sodalite and the herb is mandrake root. I'm not sure, but I do believe, oh no, wait, I was going to say, I think this is sodalite, but it's lapis lazuli because it has the, the gold sparkles in it. Um, sodalite does not have the pyrite in there. So um, both of these are again, confirmation that like, this is this is a soul contract conflict. You're meant to go through this time. I'm sorry that it's difficult for you, but hopefully this reading uh, will give you a little bit more re relief about it, that there is going to be a compromise. There, That's the only way there has to be a compromise. Um, and knowing that this is going to help everybody check off one of those soul contract things and learn your lesson. And for you, this is also um, a soul path intuition, like this is, this is, um, raising your frequency, raising your vibration, connecting you to spirit. And it's also very healing for you as well. 
So be sure to set intentions, maybe go into the blue room meditation that I suggested. Um, I don't know, you might be able to find it on the internet somewhere if you Google blue, blue room meditation. I'm not sure though. Um, uh, but it's, it's pretty easy to remember. Just you're walking through a blue door, you're entering, everything's blue, everything. You can take as long as you want, like looking at everything. Oh, look how blue, maybe the floor is made of sodalite. Maybe um, the table is like a crystalline tanzanite table. Ooh, how cool would that be? And um, it's just easy to remember. Everything's blue. You sit down and you set the intention. I am releasing this conflict to spirit. I'm releasing it, it to my spirit guides and to everybody's spirit guides involved. Please come up with a solution for everybody. And I trust that it's for my highest good and everybody else's highest good. And then you leave. Leave them at the table and let them discuss it amongst each other. So whether you do that, set some some sort of intention around I'm letting go of this conflict. I'm Maybe if you, you want to get yourself an extractor needle, if you don't have an, an extractor needle, you can just use a regular old quartz point and uh, wherever wherever you're releasing, have the point pointing out and you can hold two uh, quartz points in your hand and say, I'm, I'm releasing any, any blocked energy from this conflict. I'm letting it go. Or if you pay attention to like where this, where you're feeling this conflict, where you're feeling this tension in your body that you can actually massage and release release, ask it to go. I'm ready to let go of this and allow the crystals to help you, um, help (laughs) move that energy a little bit better and quicker. Um, good luck to you group three. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a happy new moon.